Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.co.uk and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a realistic flame effect like this one without using any plugins at all. Now if you're like me, when you think about fire or flame effects, most of us probably head straight for royalty-free footage or a particle system like Trapcode's hugely successful particular plugin. And while there's nothing wrong with that, you might be surprised to find out that you can get a pretty decent flame simulation using just the standard toolkit in After Effects. Now I'm using After Effects CC for this tutorial, but you'll be able to achieve exactly the same effect with CS3 or higher. So let's get started. First, we'll create a new composition and I'll call it Flame Demo 2. Now I'm using the HDTV 25 frames per second preset, um, but obviously you can change this to suit your needs. The duration is 10 seconds long and we've got a background color of black and I'll hit OK. Once you've done that, create a new solid, which I'll call Flame Layer. Make sure it's the uh, composition size and it doesn't matter what color you pick, so I'll stick with white for now and hit OK. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our Effects and Presets panel and find the CC Particle Systems 2 effect and drag that onto your white flame layer. Now, as is so often the case, the default settings aren't what we need, so let's sort that out. First, we'll set the birth rate to 2 and the longevity to 0.8. And then we'll twirl down the producer settings and adjust the Y value of the producer point to 960. So it'll just bring the producer right down to the bottom of the frame. And you can see the indicator just down here. Now we want to increase the radius to 80 on the X value and we'll take it right down to zero on the Y. Now under the physics section, change the animation value from explosive to direction. Leave the velocity and the inherent velocity as it is, but change the gravity to minus one. Change the direction to zero times zero and reduce the extra value to 0.5. Now if I just scrub through that, you'll see that we're starting to get somewhere, but uh, there's a ways to go yet before we get what we need. So move on to the particle section, twirl that down, and change the particle type from line to cube. Now cube is actually kind of a funky effect, but um, obviously that's not what we're after at this stage. So in the birth size setting, change that from 0 0.15, which is the default, to 1. Set the death size to 0 0.5. Make the size variation 0. And change the maximum opacity to 50%. And make sure that birth to death is selected in the color map. Then change the birth color to black and the death color to white. And that will just dictate the origin color and the end of life color. So it's starting out at the bottom as black and actually getting white towards the top. And the final thing we need to do with the particle system effect is change the composite value to screen for the transfer mode. Now, when I scrub this through, um, it'll probably look as if I've lost the plot a little bit at this point because, you know, it doesn't look much like fire at this stage. But bear with me, it actually gets a lot better than this. So go back to your effects and presets panel. Now find your rough and edges effect and drop that onto your flame layer. Now instantly you can see a change, um, but we just need to increase the scale value of the rough and edges effect to uh, make the flame elements a little bit larger but already you can see we are really starting to look like fire. Um, that's all you need to do with the rough and edges value. So the next thing to do is change the color and we do that with the tritone filter. So again, find that in your effects and presets panel and drag it onto your layer stack. So click on the color selection box for highlights and enter the following RGB values. For the red, we're looking at 217. For the green, we're looking at 184 and we want zero for the blue, and that will give us a nice bright yellow. Um, you can use the eyedropper to select the same value for the midtones, and then open up the color picker for shadows and enter the following RGB values again, 224, 53, and zero. 
and that will give you a nice orange to yellow uh, tonal range. So we're getting pretty close now, but as you can see, while it looks like flame on the outside, we're still seeing a lot of that Q particle generation um, happening in the main body of it. So we'll just fix that by finding the channel blur effect. Drag that onto your layer stack and find the green blurriness value and increase that to 20. Check the repeat edge pixels and just check that uh, horizontal and vertical are selected. Now when you RAM preview this, you find you've got a fairly convincing flame effect that also renders pretty quickly. Um, it's also quite flexible. You can shrink the radius X value to give yourself a nice narrow flame. So if I drop that down to 20, you can see how that might work as a you know top of a torch or something. And uh, you can also adjust the direction value to give it a windswept look. Um, so feel free to play around with the values to get the effect that you're after. Um, but if you want to slow it down, I'd actually recommend dropping the composition you've just created uh, into a pre-comp and using the time stretch function rather than adjusting the physics section of the particle generator. Now I've actually created an animation preset for this so you can just drag and drop it onto uh, layers in your future projects. And you'll find this along with tons of other free stuff at my new website, shortformvideo.co.uk. Um, thanks for watching, hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again next time.